What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today is part two of my 2021 NHL expansion draft predictions. Today, I'm going to be sharing my predictions on who Seattle Kraken is going to draft in the expansion draft and do it team by team and put it up on the screen so you guys get to see. At the end of this video, I'm going to be putting all of the players together and basically share with you the lineups that I think will possibly happen because of the expansion draft in Seattle's first season. Up first for the Anaheim Ducks, I honestly think my honest opinion of who they're going to select is going to be defenseman Kevin Shattenkirk. I think moving forward, he is somebody that I think will do great with the Seattle Kraken. His contract goes until 2023, and his salary hit is only $3.9 million. He's 31 years old. I think he's definitely somebody that could be very impactful for Seattle Kraken and definitely somebody that I think is going to be selected. For the Arizona Coyotes, I didn't really know who potentially would be selected. So I'm just going to go with Tyler Pitlick just because his contract goes until 2022 and he needed to follow and have that rule of 20 contracts for up to 2022. So I decided to go with him. Not that I really think he's going to be a key player, but definitely one that I think is going to be selected by the Seattle Kraken. For the Boston Bruins, there is a few players that I think could be selected by Seattle, but I'm just going to go with Connor Clifton just because, yes, he is young. He's 25 years old. His contract is $1 million, but I definitely think that he's somebody that is still building in the NHL, and he's definitely somebody that I think moving forward could be a huge deal. So I definitely want to give him a chance. And I definitely think Seattle will do the same and select him in the expansion draft. For the Buffalo Sabres, there is a few players that I honestly would have selected. However, I'm just going to go with a veteran and that is Eric Stahl. I do like Eric Stahl. I love that he is a former Stanley Cup champion, but given his age of 36 years old, I'm selecting him based on being a veteran player. His salary hits is 3.25, so not too high. But as a veteran player, I think that's definitely somebody that is worth selecting for Seattle Kraken for their expansion draft. Calgary Flames has a few other players that I think could potentially be selected, but I'm just going to be optimistic here and just say Oliver Kylington is going to get selected by the Seattle Kraken because he's somebody that I think would do great if he had a bigger role to give. He's only 23 years old, under a million for his contract. His contract runs at the end of this year, so he's going to have to resign. I think it's somebody that Calgary is definitely going to leave exposed. And I think it'd be a great decision for Seattle to select him and then offer him a contract, maybe nothing more than a million or a million point five, maybe, but definitely somebody that could definitely develop a little bit more in Seattle. And I think he's somebody that could be a top defenseman if he was given a great opportunity. And this is definitely a great opportunity for him. For Carolina Hurricanes, I'm going to select my first goalie, and that is Peter Mazurek. Just based on, I think that he's going to be a great goalie. 3.125 salary hits. I know his contract expires at the end of the season, but he's under 30 years old. I think he has a lot of potential, and he's definitely a good goalie. And based on everybody else that I could have selected for Carolina Hurricanes, I honestly think he's a great choice. There's other ones that I could have selected, but definitely... Definitely, I decided to go with a goalie because we need a goalie in Seattle. And I think that he could be an elite goalie if given an opportunity. Now for the Chicago Blackhawks, I could have went a few ways with this selection. I could have went with Malcolm Subban, who I talked about before and I'm a huge fan of. But after being on Vegas and then moving to the Blackhawks, I don't see him being as big a player as I initially thought. I still collect him and PC him, but... Given that he is 27, he's not an elite goalie, and I don't see him being one now, I didn't want to select him as a goalie. I decided just to go with Andrew Shaw, and that's definitely somebody that I think that Seattle would select over Malcolm Subain. So my selection for Chicago Blackhawks is Andrew Shaw. Now for the Colorado Avalanche, there's a few players that I think Seattle could select, but I'm just going to be optimistic here and select Tyson Jost, based on I think he could be an elite player. He's not really there yet, but I definitely think he could be a starter eventually moving forward down the line. He's only 22 years old, so I'm going to give him a huge chance. I don't think he's somebody that is going to be protected from Colorado. I think he's somebody that could be selected. Now, again, there's other players that they could select for the Kraken, but I think they would miss an opportunity if they did not select Tyson Jost. 
I think he's definitely somebody that if he's developed right in Seattle, he could be a top player in a few short years. For the Columbus Blue Jackets, I simply selected this person because he's only 25 years old. His salary hits is 2.8 million and his expiry date for his contract is 2023. So he falls in line with all of the rules that I need. And that is Valislav. I probably butchered his name. I don't really know who he is. I only selected him based on his expiry date for his contract, his salary hits, and given his age. That is somebody young that I think the Seattle definitely needs in their expansion year. For the Dallas Stars, I'm just gonna go with Radic Faxa. I think I butchered his name. I'm not sure. He's 26 years old, 3.25 salary hits, and he's good until 2025. So again, a younger player, not the youngest player they could have selected, but a young player that I think Seattle definitely needs more of. So that's why I decided to go with him. For the Detroit Red Wings, I decided to go with the goalie this time. And even though I like Jonathan Bernier on the Detroit Red Wings, and I'm a huge fan of his, I think he will get selected and picked up from the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. Now his salary hit is only 3 million, but he's definitely somebody that I think could be a veteran player moving forward and help out the team along the way. He's only 32 years old. So I definitely think he's somebody that I think highly of, and I think he's definitely somebody worth selecting in an, an expansion draft. For the Edmonton Oilers, there's a few players that I could have selected. I decided to go with this player based on the facts that we needed somebody that went until the 2022 season to follow that rule for the contracts. And that is Kyle Turris. Now, he used to be part of the Ottawa Senators. I didn't really care for him there. He did go to the Nashville Predators where he was okay, but now he's on Edmonton Oilers. So I don't know if he's going to do great, and but he's still somebody that I think Seattle is going to select. And even though his contract goes until 2022, I don't know if they will keep him for long, but he's definitely somebody that will definitely fill up some of the space for the roster. Now for the Florida Panthers, I am just going to select Carter Verhege. I probably butchered the crap out of his name, but 25 years old, contract is only 1 million, up until 2022 is when he's contracted till. I think that is a great, great choice. I could have went with Chris Dredger, but that's a lower end goalie, and that's not somebody that I think Seattle needs to select right now. I'm just going to select that player and leave it as it is. For the LA Kings, I decided just to go with a player that I don't really know much of, just because there was not much left to choose from, and that is Martin FRK, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, he's 27 years old, 7.25 thousand a year, and he's good until 2022. Not really a top player, but they didn't really have much to choose from, at least in my opinion, for the LA Kings. Now this is where things get very, very interesting for the Minnesota Wild. I'm gonna select Matt Dumba based on the fact that there is three defensemen that have no move clauses, and I think the only way that Minnesota Wild will be able to protect Matt Dumba is if that one of the players with a no move clause waves their no move clause. So I think that Matt Dumba is going to be selected and is going to be part of the Seattle Kraken all around a great player. And I think he's going to do huge things in Seattle. And I think he's going to get selected from Seattle. Now for the Montreal Canadiens, I'm going to select Ben Chariot based on the fact that he's 29 years old, 3.5 salary hits, and he does have his contract go until 2022. So I don't know much about the player, but I decided to go with him based on he follows all of the rules that I needed to select players for. Now for the Nashville Predators, as much as I wanted to select Mark Borwicki for a defenseman, I just don't see him doing much on the team or moving forward. He is only 31 years old, but he does like to fight more than anything, and he does cost the team a lot of minutes on the ice. So I'm just going to go with... Rocco Grimaldi probably butchered his name, but he follows all of the rules for the selection process. The New Jersey Devils, I'm simply going to select Nick Murley. He's 23 years old. He does have a under 1 million salary hit, so I think that is great. His contract is up at the end of this year, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. But Nick Murley for the New Jersey Devils, I think that is a smart decision for Seattle. Next for the New York Islanders, I'm just going to go with the guy with a $5 million cap hit that is likely going to be left unprotected, and that is Ryan Pulak. He is 26 years old, so still young, and his contract goes until 2022. I think it would be a dumb decision for Seattle not to select this player. New York Rangers, I'm also going to select a defenseman, 33-year-old Jack Johnson, based on he has a very low-end salary hit, only one15 million a year 
That's the main reason why I'm selecting him. I also have to follow all of the rules. And sometimes you're not selecting the top player on each team. You're just basically selecting a player to follow in line with the rules. And that's why I'm selecting him. For the Ottawa Senators, this is one that I think could have went either way. But I ultimately decided to go with this player because I needed a few more defensemen on my team. And that is Joshua Brown. He is somebody that Ottawa didn't acquire not too long ago. I know Philip Gustafson is still unprotected and he is a goalie that I think of highly, but I'm going to go with Joshua Brown just based on I needed a defenseman and he follows everything that I need. 26 years old, so he's still young, 1.2 million a year, and he goes until 2022. That's why I'm going to select him. The Philadelphia Flyers, I'm going to select a player that I probably am going to butcher his name, and that is Travis Konesny. Probably butchered that, but 5.5 million a year, good until 2025, and he's 23 years old, so still young. And I think they definitely need some young players for Seattle. And this is definitely a choice to make since he's so super young. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, I'm going to go with Marcus Pedersen or Peterson. Uh, again, I don't know this player very well, but he's only 24 years old, $4 million cap hits, and expires in 2025. So follows everything that I need for this expansion draft. For the San Jose Sharks, there's not really much of big names to choose from, so I'm just gonna select somebody random because of their salary hit is not too high and their contract goes until 2024. And that is Radam Simkek. I probably butchered his name, but that is the only reason I selected him is because there's not really much to choose from for San Jose. For St. Louis Blues, I'm just simply gonna select Ivan Barbashev. He's somebody that is, yes, 25 and $1.4 million salary hits, but I don't see him being protected because St. Louis does have a lot of great players and other players that I think will be protected over him. So I think since he's left exposed, there's a few others that I think that Seattle could select, but I'm going to go with Ivan Barbashev just based on I think he could do great things if given an opportunity, and I think Seattle is the ultimate opportunity for this player. For Tampa Bay Lightning, I'm going to go with Alex Killorn just because I don't see him being protected. His salary hit is just under 4.5 million. Good until 2023. He is only 31 year old, but I don't see Tampa Bay protecting him. So I see them leaving him out to be selected for the Seattle Kraken. Either him or Anthony Cirelli, but I think Killorn will definitely make a bigger impact on the Seattle Kraken than he did on Tampa Bay Lightning, even though on Tampa Bay, he did have a huge impact. The Toronto Maple Leafs, they have so many top players that I really didn't know who to select. Now I left Joe Thornton unprotected, but I don't know if I'm going to select him based on his contract is not necessarily the greatest. Um, he's definitely somebody that I could see going and potentially retiring in another year or so but having retired as part of Seattle Kraken would be an interesting thing to do but his contract expires at the end of the season he was only offered a $700,000 contract for one season so since I needed somebody that goes until 2022 I'm just going to go with Pierre Engvall probably butchers his name but the only reason I went with him is because I needed more contracts that go until 2021 2022 and joe thornton unfortunately expires in 2021 if his contract went to 2022 i would definitely select him based on he's a veteran player he's a player i love i'd love to see him on the team but his contract does not go until then so i'm gonna have to leave it with this player now for the vancouver canucks i'm gonna select the last goalie and that is gonna be demko just based on the fact that not only did i need a goalie but vancouver already has an elite goalie that they are likely going to protect and that is Braden Holtzby. I don't see them not protecting him. So I think that Demko is going to be left exposed. So I think that the Seattle are definitely going to select him. Now he's not going to be used as the starting goalie. I think that Jonathan Bernier and Peter Masryk will be used way more than Demko. But I think that he will be put on the bench for a long time and used in case of injuries. But his contract's only a little over $1 million, So I think that is a safe goalie for Seattle to select for somebody that's just going to be sit and benched. For the Washington Capitals, I'm going to select Brendan Dillon based on his salary cap hit is 3.9 million. His contract goes until 2024 and he's 30 years old. So somebody that's, for me personally, I don't know him too well, but somebody that I could see Seattle selecting based on he follows everything and falls 
in line with the rules for the expansion draft. The last player that is going to be selected from the Winnipeg Jets, I think, is going to be Derek Forbert. I'm a huge fan of him. I needed another defenseman. His cap hit is only one million, and his contract runs out at the end of this year. He's 28 years old, but he's somebody that I think with a little bit more of a push, he could be a top defenseman if given an opportunity. And like I've already mentioned with other players, Seattle would be the ultimate opportunity for anybody. So I definitely think they're going to select him. If he ends up being protected, which I can't see happening, I would personally go with Dylan DeMello for the Winnipeg Jets. But I definitely think Derek Forbert is a honest choice and something that I think could potentially happen. So if everybody is selected, I have 14 forwards, 13 defensemen, three goalies, and everything else falls in line. The projected cap hit is 59 million and the cap space as of right now is 22 million. So I think with a couple trades and them trying to get some key players and trade some maybe draft picks and different things like that and some of the lesser players, maybe they can get a little bit better players and fill up that cap space. But definitely, definitely a great start. So now that I have selected everybody that I think Seattle Kraken will select in the expansion draft, here's how I think the lines will look for the first season. For the forwards, I think that for the first line is going to be Alex Killorn, Eric Stahl, and Tyson Jost. I really, really believe in Tyson Jost, so I wanted to put him on the first line because he's somebody that I think could do a great job there. Second line is Radek Faxa. In the left wing, we have Ivan Barbashev and then Andrew Shaw, who is injured right now, but I think will be back in time for the next season. I think he will do great in the second line. The third line is Rocco Grimaldi, Kyle Turris, and Tyler Picklick, just based on the facts that I needed people to fill in the third lineup. And for the fourth lineup is going to be Pierre Engvall. I think I butchered that name. Nick Merkley and Carter Verhaeg. I think I butchered that name as well, but I didn't know who else to put for the fourth line. As far as the defensive lines, as far as the defense lines, I think that Matt Dumba and Ryan Pulak are going to be the first line. I can't wait to see Matt Dumba on Seattle Kraken. Kevin Shattenkirk and Brandon Dillon is going to be on the second line for defense. And I think the fourth line, I'm going to be optimistic here and give them a shot, even though there's other players that are probably a little bit better on them that I selected for the expansion draft. I'm going to say Derek Forbert and Oliver Kylington because I think I had them on a line on NHL 20. So I really think that there's somebody that could do great if they're given a great opportunity. And I think this is just that. And for the goalies that I think are going to be starting up first is going to be Peter Mazrick. I always butcher names. I think I just did there. And Jonathan Bernier. Now, again, there's some other players that I think could be selected or tossed in. But of course, since they selected so many people, I think that some of the lines are going to be shuffling up for the first couple weeks or couple games just to see really where players stand and as far as the team. So I really, really think that Joshua Brown and people like Connor Clifton will get bigger opportunities. It's just, I think these are the lines, the ones I just mentioned, are what's going to start off the season and things might shuffle further down the line. So comment down below who you think will get selected by the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft and who you think will be on each line. I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed and I can't wait to see what happens for the expansion draft and hope you guys feel the same. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.